for president who's seasoned through and through. But that's a doggone season that he won't try something new. A man who's old enough to know. And young enough to do. Well, it's up to you. It's up to you. It's strictly up to you. Do you like a man who answers straight? A man who's always fair? We'll measure him against the others and when you compare. You'll cast your vote for Kennedy and the change that's overdue. So it's up to you. It's up to you. It's strictly up to you. Yes, it's Kennedy, 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 Kennedy. Queridos amigos, les habla la esposa del senador John F. Kennedy, candidato a la presidencia de los Estados Unidos. En estos tiempos de tanto peligro, cuando la paz mundial se ve amenazada por el comunismo, es necesario tener en la Casa Blanca un líder capaz de guiar nuestros destinos con una mano firme. Mi esposo siempre vigilará los intereses de todos los sectores de nuestra sociedad que necesitan la protección de un gobierno humanitario para el futuro de nuestros niños y para logra lograr un mundo donde exista la paz verdadera. Voten ustedes por el Partido Demócrata el día 8 de noviembre. ¡Que viva Kennedy! Every Republican politician wants you to believe that Richard Nixon is, quote, experienced. They even want you to believe that he has actually been making decisions in the White House. But listen to the man who should know best, the President of the United States. A reporter recently asked President Eisenhower this question about Mr. Nixon's experience. I just wondered if you could give us an example of a major idea of his that you had adopted in that role as the, as the decider and, uh, and final... Uh, if you give me a week, I might think of one. I don't remember. Because... <laughs> At the same press conference, President Eisenhower said, No one can make a decision except me. And as for any major ideas from Mr. Nixon, If you give me a week, I might think of one. I don't remember. President Eisenhower could not remember, but the voters will remember. For real leadership in the 60s, help elect Senator John F. Kennedy, President. This is the Sills family. Recently, John F. Kennedy visited the Sills. Mr. and Mrs. Sills are facing one of the great problems that all American families are now facing, and that is the great increase in the cost of living. Our rent has gone up, our food, our uh, cleaning of our clothing, buying of the clothing, our gas and electric, and our telephone bills have gone up. What's been your experience, Mr. Sills, as far as keeping those two daughters of yours going? Well, we're very concerned with their future. We would like both of them to go to college. Have you been able to put much aside as far no, as... No, un unfortunately, not right now. One of the uh, things which I think has increased the cost of living has been this administration's reliance upon a high interest rate policy. My own judgment is that we're going to have to uh, try to do a better job in this field. Yes, we can do better. But to do so, we must elect the man who cares about America's problems. We must elect John F. Kennedy, President. This historic moment is brought to you by Citizens for Kennedy. As I said at the beginning, the question before us all, that faces all Republicans and all Democrats, is can freedom in the next generation conquer or are the communists going to be successful? That's the great issue. And if we meet our responsibilities, I think freedom will conquer. If we fail, if we fail to move ahead, if we fail to develop sufficient military and economic and social strength here in this country, then I think that uh, the tide could begin to run against us. And I don't want historians 10 years from now to say, these were the years when the tide ran out for the United States. I want them to say, these were the years when the tide came in. These were the years when the United States started to move again. That's the question before the American people, and only you can decide what you want, what you want this country to be what you want to do with the future. I think we're ready to move. And it is to that great task, if we're successful, that we will address ourselves. Hi. My name is Harry Belafonte. I'm an artist, and I'm not a politician. But like most Americans, I have a great interest in the political and the economic destiny of my country. I'm seated here with Senator Jack Kennedy, 
As a Negro and as an American, I have many questions, and I'm sure everyone does, about civil rights, about foreign policy, about the economy of the country, and about things that will happen. And I want to make it very clear, Harry, that on this question of equality of opportunity for all Americans, whether it's in the field of civil rights, better minimum wages, better housing, better working conditions, jobs, I stand for these things. The Democratic Party under Franklin Roosevelt stood for them. I'm voting for the senator. How about you? Vote for a leader like Roosevelt. Vote for John F. Kennedy for president. Mr. Nixon, what is the truth? Can we continue to have peace while Khrushchev is trying to stir up the whole world against us? Well, the truth is that we must continue to have peace. And we can if we continue to show firmness and strength to the communist world. Khrushchev is a cold, hard, ruthless man. He feeds upon weakness and doubt. And we must never make the mistake of letting him think we are weak. We must show him we are strong economically and militarily, that we will not be coerced, that we will not tolerate being pushed around. We must continue to deal with communism and the Soviet leaders, not belligerently, but firmly, and always with vigilance. Vote for Nixon and Lodge, November 8th. They understand what peace demands. Here is President Eisenhower's decision on who is best qualified to follow him in the White House. Dick Nixon is superbly experienced, maturely conditioned in the critical affairs of the world. For eight years, he has been a full participant in the deliberations that have produced the great decisions affecting our nation's security and have kept us at peace. He has shared more intimately in the great affairs of government than any vice president in all our history. He has traveled the world studying at first hand the hopes and the needs of more than 50 nations. He knows in person the leaders of those nations, knowledge of immeasurable value to a future president. By all odds, Richard Nixon is the best qualified man to be the next president of the United States. Along with the president, all America is going for Nixon and Lodge. Vote for them on November 8th. They understand what peace demands. What is the most important issue confronting the American people in this election campaign? There's no question about the answer that I have found in traveling all over this nation. Above everything else, the American people want leaders who will keep the peace without surrender for America and the world. Henry Cabot Lodge and I have had the opportunity of serving with President Eisenhower in this cause for the last seven and a half years. We both know Mr. Khrushchev. We have sat opposite the conference table with him. We know what peace demands. We will keep America the strongest nation in the world. And we will couple that strength with firm diplomacy. No apologies, no regrets. Always willing to negotiate for peace, but never conceding anything without getting a concession in return. Vote for Nixon and Lodge, November 8th. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Ambassador Henry Cabot Lodge. My fellow Americans, our responsibility is great. We must remain strong so that no nation will ever dare attack us. We must lead by our example, bringing about equality here at home, as the Declaration of Independence promised, so as to guarantee that the promise of the American Revolution and not the menace of the communist revolution will be the way of the future. This is the time for judgment, for dedication, but above all for experience and talent in high places. The next president must have all of these qualities, as does my running mate, Richard Nixon. Vote for Nixon and Lodge November 8th. They understand what peace demands.